Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, but they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm. Has he won for himself the victory? The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness in the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it. The lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world. And the peoples with equity. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. War has broken out in Israel. Armies from the east have crossed the Jordan and occupied the entire western bank of the Jordan River and moved toward Jerusalem, which has already been captured. The walls of the city have been raised and the temple has been destroyed. Most of the population have been captured, deported to Babylon, and forced into slavery. Even though this sounds like a very modern scenario, what I've just described actually happened some 600 years before Christ was born. And it is noted in many places in the Bible since it is such a tragic and momentous event in the books of First and Second Kings, Nehemiah, Psalms, Isaiah and Ezra, among others. Giuseppe Verdi wrote an opera about the exile called Nabucco, and its most favorite music is the chorus of the Hebrew slaves, which references Psalm 137, by the waters of Babylon we sat, and yea, we wept. Being in exile is always a harsh and difficult thing. Anyone in exile is cut off from the known and the familiar, from friends and family and the normal patterns of life. 
For the last almost two years now, we've been in a sort of exile, haunted by an unseen enemy and afraid. We've been in lockdown, businesses have closed, we're separated from friends and family and isolated. Our normal patterns of life have been disrupted, including Sunday worship in the cathedral. This has been painful for all of us. In a personal way, I miss gathering with all of you to sing God's praises, to celebrate God's mercy and forgiveness, and especially to receive the sacraments. Of course, God is everywhere and not confined to a building or a place. I remember the story of a young boy who was awakened one night by a terrible thunderstorm. His mother came into his room to comfort him and she said, you don't have to be afraid, God is everywhere. I know that, said the little boy, but sometimes you just need somebody next to you with skin on. And that's what we have all missed in the past year and a half, being together in a physical way, to sing and pray and touch and receive one another's blessings and God's. Throughout the pandemic, the cathedral has remained open to its mission in various ways, individual visitation and prayer, the cathedral school, community services such as COVID testing and blood drives, outdoor concerts and vigils on the front steps, our Sunday soup kitchen and clothing closet and the ACT program for children. Thank God for all those who've taken part in these various events and who've given so generously in service to others as we take our mission forward. And thanks too for those who've contributed financially so generously in support of our mission to the community and the world. Soon, in the next few months, we will begin to resume more normal patterns of public worship and gatherings. Come July, it is my expectation and plan that we will resume a weekday service of daily Eucharist in the cathedral. In September, God willing, we will resume Sunday worship in the cathedral. The chapter, that is the cathedral clergy, have been working and praying to discern what Sunday schedule and what worship will be like when we return from our pandemic exile and regather. There will be Eucharist at eight o'clock each Sunday morning, though we will be receiving the sacrament in accordance with diocesan guidelines that is, we will only receive the bread and not the chalice. In the beginning of our resumption of public worship, our main service on Sunday morning will be a more classical Anglican service of sung morning prayer with sermon and choir. All will be done in accord with government and diocesan guidelines. As plans mature, there will be more specific information coming. No doubt, life will be different as we move out of the pandemic, and we will all have to make adjustments. But we also move ahead and hope and confidence that God's mission <clears throat> continues to our city and our world. But no matter what changed or new circumstances we face, we are not relieved of our baptismal call to work for justice and peace, equity, inclusion, the dignity of all people, and welcome to all in following the mission our Lord has laid before us, a mission of service and worship and witness. Like the ancient Israelites <clears throat> and the tragedy of their exile in Babylon, we have sat beside the rivers of New York in our own pandemic exile, and like the ancient Israelites, we have wept. Thank God for our ancient forebears and their faithfulness and perseverance. Pray that we have inherited their faithfulness and determination as well as their resolve 
as we move ahead in our witness to God and service to our world in this day. As the psalmist says in Psalm 30, weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. Some years ago, C.S. Lewis, an Oxford Don and an Anglican lay theologian and novelist, he wrote the Narnia Chronicles, wrote a small book entitled, Till We Have Faces. That book is Lewis's vision of what life in heaven will be like, and it is a lovely vision. What Lewis envisions and the Gospels proclaim is the end of the greatest of all exiles, the great exile that began in the Garden of Eden with the banishment of Grandfather Adam and Grandmother Eve, an exile that continues to this day. The promise of the Gospel is that with the resurrection of Jesus, this, the greatest of all exiles, will end. And on that day, the great exile, uh, on that day when the great exile ends, the church's mission will be fulfilled and all people will be gathered round God's throne in equity and peace, known, loved, and celebrated for who they truly are, because all are made in God's image. And in that great reunion, humanity's exile will end and our joy will begin through God's love expressed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And until that day, brothers and sisters, the church's mission and our mission continues. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beginning today, we invite those of you who are joining us on Facebook or YouTube to type into the chat the needful things that come to mind, bidding us all to deeper and fuller prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We join all the world's Anglicans today in praying for the Anglican Church of Kenya. In the diocese today, we are praying for Episcopal Charities of New York. Especially, let us pray that the ministry of the new director of Episcopal Charities, the Reverend Kevin Van Hook, will bring forth a rich harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all ministers of the many religions and Christian denominations who gathered on the cathedral steps on Thursday in the hope of becoming more useful in efforts to respond to civic crises like COVID and those who gathered with them and the communities from which they come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the people of Islam as on Wednesday they mark the end of their Ramadan fast. Let us pray that the festival of Eid al-Fitr be a time of great joy for them, especially for the Muslim community here in New York. Let us pray for the reconciliation of all who proclaim that God is one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for an end to the COVID-19 crisis. Especially, let us pray for the people of India as they struggle to care for the sick and to tend the bodies of the dead. And let us pray for the conversion of those who continue to deny that the pandemic is real. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the nations of the world. This week, let us bring before God, especially the people of Colombia and their strife, and the people of Mexico, as they mourn those who died in the subway overpass collapse. Mindful of the nations and their governments, for whom else should we pray today? Let us speak it aloud or type it into the chat. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us be mindful of others in need or trouble. Our prayers have been asked this week for Luis Rivera Rivera, Deacon, and Richard Johnson, for B.E. Leisner, for Alonzo Jackson and Elizabeth Hathaway, and Jerry McMillan, for Karina, and for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For whom else should we pray today? Let us speak their names aloud 
or type them into the chat. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in gratitude for all that is good in our lives. Above all, in these great 50 days, let us give thanks that for the glorious triumph of Jesus over sin and death, and let us give thanks that by baptism we share in his victory. And as always, let us give thanks for those who make our common life and common mission here at the cathedral possible by their generosity. For what else should we give thanks today? Let us call it to mind, or speak it, or type it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mother in God, on this Mother's Day, we give thanks for all mothers, and for all those who give nurture to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the dead. Our prayers have been asked this week for Solai Leon, Nancy Steinberger, Warren Geisinger, and Sunil Mahaya. Let us be mindful of all others who have died, especially our sisters and brothers in Christ, that great cloud of witnesses. Let us name the ones we know and miss and mourn in silence, aloud, or in the chat. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. And as we go, may the love, the peace, the justice, and the blessing of the Holy One who is in the midst of us be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. My name is Patrick Berquist, and I'm the Director of Programming here at Episcopal Charities in the Diocese of New York. Sunday, May 9th, will be a great day. First, it's Mother's Day, so we're gonna be celebrating and remembering what our mothers have done and what so many mothers around us have done for us. Second, in the Diocese of New York, it's Episcopal Charities Sunday, where we highlight the good work that so many of our programs are doing, particularly on this day, those working in food insecurity. We all know that this last year has been overwhelming. And it's been particularly overwhelming for those who struggle with food security. It's in this context of a pandemic that our programs, the 60 plus feeding programs in the Episcopal Charities world have stepped up in abundance and for the spirit of abundance to meet this need. New programs have been started in communities all over the diocese just this year to meet these demands. Our more established programs became more creative in finding ways of connecting with the community and to meet the growing need. And the need was huge this last year. At the peak of the pandemic, food pantries were experiencing a 350% increase in need based on their previous year of 2019. And Episcopal Charities stepped up. Not only were we able to get hundreds of thousands of dollars into these critical programs, but we were also able to create a network of support for many of these leaders. We know the work's not done. The pandemic isn't going anywhere. And so today we're asking for your support. We're asking you to continue to support your local parishes and those programs, but also to support Episcopal Charities. There's a number of ways. It can be as easy as sending a text to 91999 and just say Sunday. Many parishes are taking special collections on the 9th. Or there are multiple other ways listed here that you can give. However you choose to give to Episcopal Charities, know that every dollar is going to make sure people in all of our communities, in your community, have nutritious food to eat. Know that we are profoundly grateful for your trust and for your support. Thank you. <laughs> 